Hello and welcome to Holding the Space. I'm Lisa Young and I'm being joined today by Tom Hubbard. Hello Tom Hubbard, how Hello, are you? Hello Lisa, I'm Grant. This is an absolute pleasure and delight for me because uh, we've known each other um, for a wee bit through the Five Frights community. I've long admired your work. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Tell us about Tom. Oh, well, um, Tom is um, getting on a bit. Um, he's um, could display the battle scars from the cultural wars that he's been <laughs> in since the thirties. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, um, well, I, I'm, I've always been a bit of a late developer. I initially started out um, as an eternal student um, when I was doing my PhD. Um, but then um, I got my PhD, my doctorate, uh, and I had also um, studied librarianship at mm-hmm. the University of Strathclyde. Well, one day I'll have to, I'll have to get a job. <laughs> I'll have to get a job. Go. Right. Um, <laughs> so the first um, job that I got um, as a as a librarian, was uh, was in Edinburgh at the Scottish mm. Poetry Library, which had just just started up. So and I was were, very lucky to get were, that. So that combined the that combined my um, skills, such as they were as a librarian, with my interest. Um, so I was there for uh, for eight years. Um, I left at the end of ninety two mm-hmm. um, when I got the opportunity to to teach at Grenoble University. And, and uh, although I had um, I, I had done uh, what travel before you know mm-hmm. giving giving talks or giving readings in, at various festivals and events um, uh, in the invited lectures in in, in various mm-hmm. various countries uh, this is an opportunity to, to spend some time in uh, in a european country as you see another european country because mm-hmm. scotland is a european country uh-huh. um, and uh, and in france mm-hmm. and uh, it was fantastic the um, the students were great um, they had a great sense of humour. They were very interested in in Scotland, mm-hmm. um, so I could clear away all the sentimental crap about the older lives, and so, you know, and just give and just give them. Uh, well, you know, look, this is um, this is what our people in Scotland have um, have written about. You know, they were, they were just so eager eager to to learn. Um, I was actually um, there was an existing um, Scottish studies set up at uh, at Grenoble. Um, so there were three of us, including myself, who were um, who were teaching this survey course literature from the, from the beginnings up to what was then the, the present day. But I was told it had started when a French professor and a Scottish professor had met years ago <coughs> and discovered that they had a common interest in whisky. Um, as so you that, do, yeah, as you do. So <laughs> that was that was how it, how it started. So that French academic interest in Scottish literature uh, was floated on a sea of whisky. Uh, from there, I, I, I thought I would uh, see if I could get some some work in America. Mm-hmm. So I was at the University of Connecticut uh-huh. uh, for a couple of semesters. Came back to Scotland, knee job, um, but then I was rescued um, by um, an opportunity to to go to Hungary uh-huh. and teach in uh, teach in Budapest. Uh-huh. So um, that was another experience, you know, to go behind. Um, the former iron curtain, so to speak, yeah. and um, you know, and again, um, it was a case of, of um, uh, mixing of cultures because I, I was there to learn as well mm-hmm. as well as to teach. I mean, it's interesting that in Scotland, um, our word uh, to learn mm-hmm. in Scottish English or learn in Scots means both to learn and to teach. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the same thing. And so it's always exchange. I, I was learning from the students, you know. And you've literally not always I mean, the things I was learning from the students weren't always the things that my mother would approve of, you know, because they were French students. They were very uh-huh. worldly, uh-huh. Um, you know, with a, a rather scandalous sense of humour. Um, <laughs> so that that was great. Um, but you've got a big same, smile same, on your face. Same, same in, in, in Hungary. This, mm-hmm. um, yeah, the thing is, it, it has to be reciprocal. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not just a case of you going out there and. Um, saying to them, well, this is our culture, you know, mm-hmm. so sit back and listen and I shall explain to you. Um, I think it's important for us when we go out there to pick up on, mm-hmm. um, on what they're doing, you know, it should be a reciprocal arrangement. So if I said that your work centred a lot around partnership? Yeah. Um, this joint partnership between culture? 
yeah, and cultures. Yeah. And I like to quote the Irish playwright J.M. Singh, who said that all art is a collaboration. Um, you know, when we write a piece of um, poetry or prose, or when we paint a picture or compose a piece of music, it's not just us as individuals mm-hmm. who, who's creating that work. Mm-hmm. Um, we're part of what's gone before, mm-hmm. you know, whether we're aware of it or, mm-hmm. or not. Conversations um, you've heard, people you've met, books you've read. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And then, of course, you know, for a for a book to appear, for a piece of music to be performed, mm-hmm. um, for a painting to be exhibited, that necessarily involve involves other people. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I think it's um, it, it's important to um, be able to distinguish, to know the difference between your art and your ego. Mm-hmm. If I could put it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, Is that a, a learning experience you've had yourself? Uh, yes, I, I think it is. You know, you. Um, I think the longer, the longer you live and work, the more the more you realise just how dependent you are on on other people to make your project projects happen. Mm-hmm. You know, so you know you just can't claim that um, it's all my own work because it isn't. <laughs> Can I ask what your um your first because we're we're in a, in a room here surrounded by books, and I'm wondering. Well, I think there's too many. Yeah. N- th- there's a there's never mm-hmm. enough books, mm-hmm. um, in my opinion. No, no, um, no. but it, I'm glad you said that. What's what's mm-hmm. your first memory? Do you have a first memory of uh, reading, holding a book? Yeah, I think it was my mum who um who encouraged me. Um, she she wanted me to read David Copperfield. Mm-hmm. Uh, this would be sometime oh, before I went to school. Mm-hmm. Um, I was able to read and write before I went to school, and I think it was because of my mum. Um, oh. And uh, it, it would have been some kind of um, mm-hmm. abridged version mm-hmm. of David Copperfield for mm-hmm. kids. Um, at that time, <clears throat> there were uh, there were comics published that were kind of um, abridgments of the of the classics mm-hmm. with. Uh, well, the, the comics, you know, with, yeah. with, with illustrations, and uh, and they were very popular at the time. And um, you know, I would uh, I, I, on a Saturday, I would I would spend my pocket money on mm-hmm. on them. You know, they were uh, they cost. Um, God, I'm showing the age now. They cost one and threepence. <laughs> I think it was about six pence mm-hmm. in today's money. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that I think um, I think these versions for. For the Bairns mm-hmm. and the and the comic versions, um, I think that's that, that's that's mm-hmm. what helped me, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, although we weren't we weren't allowed to, t- to take comics into school, even if they were worthy, you know. Like, Real, right. Like so that. it was very much a difference mm-hmm. between. And then I had a gran who uh, who liked poetry, mm-hmm. and I remember going along the high street and uh, buying my first two anthologies of of uh, poetry with my pocket money and my my gran. Um, approved so mm-hmm. um so these were the um these are the seeds that were planted you yeah. you might you might see because at that time um you know i never thought i would go on to become a become a published writer because mm-hmm. well you just don't know no. um you know what uh your destiny is going going mm-hmm. to take you you know your, your grandfather was thomas hubbard the member of parliament my paternal grandfather that's yeah right. he was uh, he was a labor mp for uh, Kirkcaldy Burroughs, as it then was, mm-hmm. um, from 1944 to, to 59. Mm-hmm. Um, he stood there just before the 1959 um, election. He um, he had terrible health. Mm-hmm. Um, if we weren't visiting him at home uh, or in London, mm-hmm. you know, being shown around, around the House of Commons, uh, we'd be visiting him in hospital. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, he'd been a minor. Ah. And um, he'd suffered um, suffered an injury because at that time, your guys down in the pits they they would have to wade through an awful lot of water. Oh, absolutely! And, um, and then they used picks oh, picks yeah. in these days, mm-hmm. you know. So there's all that dust that's mm-hmm. come coming into them. And when he when he was an MP, one of his one of his interests, one of his one of his campaigns was uh, the treatment of pneumoconiosis, mm-hmm. which was uh, a disease that miners suffer from as in in, ah. in, in in the lungs. Uh, and he um, he campaigned strongly for um, the Victoria Hospital to to happen. So um, 
you know, knowing his own poor health, uh-huh. um, health issues became uh-huh. um, became his forte, if you like, in, in his um, in his political campaigns. Yeah. So he helped uh, bring I, health. Then I later discovered that um, I had a, a second cousin uh, who would be his great nef- great niece, mm-hmm. uh, who qualified as a doctor, and I thought, well, he would have approved of that. Yeah. Um, so yes, um, he when the Labour government in 1951 had a tiny majority um, he was ill then he was in hospital and he had to be taken into the chamber of the House of Commons on a stretcher in order to, to cast his vote wow. you know, so every, every vote every vote kind of did, yeah. Mm-hmm. so uh, yeah um, so what's but towards like? the end he, um, he, he, had a, he had a series of strokes and I remember um, he was writing something to a constituent a constituent on House of Commons notepaper and he got the words mixed up uh, the words beginning with D mm-hmm. and uh, I was scared I didn't know what was happening to my to my granddad mm-hmm. see I mean to his constituents he was their MP yeah. uh, to me he's your granddad, granddad and, um, and, and I loved him mm-hmm. uh, in the last couple of years he was a, he was a pitiful sight because the, the strokes just took away his his mind altogether mm-hmm. and he, he, he died at the age of Age of sixty-two, uh-huh. and and these in these days, you know, talk about late nineteen fifties, early sixties. Mm-hmm. Um, guys are old mm-hmm. um, in their late fifties and, yeah. and early sixties. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm in my I'm in my late sixties now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not old, you know. <laughs> well, at least I pretend not to be. <laughs> I wonder what what's it like driving past the Victoria Hospital, knowing that your granddad helped to make that building happen in Kirkcaldy well it gives, it gives, me, it gives me a lot of pride mm-hmm. um, you know but <clears throat> him and all the other people you know including the um, including the medics who um, made, made, made it possible mm-hmm. um, but you know I much prefer to uh, travel past the hospital rather, rather, rather than, than go visit. in it if I could yeah. possibly help <laughs> <laughs> but with my advancing years, it will become more and more necessary to uh, pop mm-hmm. in there from time to time. What does um, what does education mean to you? Education. We can't do without it. You can't have democracy without education. Mm-hmm. Uh, democracy without education just becomes democra- democracy. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we can see the results of that. and mm-hmm so many parts of the world these days um, everyone deserves a decent education everyone deserves to um, have the best in the world's culture uh, to be made available to them mm-hmm. um, I can't stand this idea that um, this assumption that working class people um, can't appreciate Mozart or Shakespeare uh, or so on. You know, that, I think that is mm-hmm. patronising bollocks. Uh-huh. Um, it belongs to everyone. You know, um, what was interesting? Yeah. I was on a, a lecture tour in Italy um, about twenty four years ago now, and I was walking through the streets of the north Italian town of Bergamo where mm-hmm. I was given one of my lectures, and there was this this newspaper kiosk, and they had um, they had CDs mm-hmm. on. <laughs> on a kind of clothesline attached yeah. with pegs uh, and it was all of Italian, mm-hmm. Italian opera uh-huh. and um, but I knew this already but it just brought home to me that uh, you know in Italy opera is a, is a popular art and yeah. it doesn't matter what class you come from mm-hmm. um, it's, it's accessible it's av- to it's everyone it's available to mm-hmm. you you know but um, you know there is this kind of neurosis uh, I think in, 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 in Britain and I'm afraid it's, it's still here in Scotland as well uh, that um, you know all that stuff is highfalutin. It's for highbrows and uh, and so on. I mean, even the very concept of highbrow and, and, and yeah. lowbrow. You know, you you won't come across that to the It'll, same extent in mainland Europe. I mean, it's all it's almost creates a barrier to learning. It does, yeah, yeah. yeah all these prejudices. Mm-hmm. 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 Um. Your work, um, this is in the Fletchatorium, 
which I love. I love that word. <laughs> I think it's the most beautiful word. But it's actually flechatoria. Flechatoria. Yeah. There you go. Um, Flech is a flea. 